Is this the handouts? Huh? Are these the handouts? I don't have any handouts. Okay. I'm good. Come on, let's go. Praise the Lord. Amen. We welcome everyone to our morning worship on this Sunday, July the 23rd at the Bethel AME Church, Corsicana, Texas. We welcome everybody, both in our live and our virtual audience. We will begin our service with singing uh, of Holy, Holy, Holy procession. Sister Dolores Carter will present our call to worship. Our opening hymn will be num will be Oh God our help in ages past. And uh, let me see. It's a great hymn of the church. Which is on number sixty one in the AV hymn. Oh God our help in ages past. We will have uh, our uh, opening prayer. I'd like to ask for their experience to Lead us in our opening prayer. And Sister Denise Freeman will read our scripture. Uh, Sister Penny Liggins will give the summary of the Decalogue. Uh, we will have announcements by Sister Freeman. Altar call. Sister Duane Yancey will do our Black History Moment. Followed by a selection by our Gospel Choir and the message on the Great Restoration. Let us... Uh, Stand, please. Come on. Tents of wickedness. Thank you. 
bones with seed strength. And he began to stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And the people perceived what sin was And they
like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Lord.
because of the uh, number of members uh, was dwindling and uh, funds that were raised through our, our fundraising efforts were also dwindling. So it is now $500, but my uh, encouragement to you is do the best you can. Uh, do the best you can. Pray about it and do the best you can. But we do need those funds to come on in so that when the time comes to make these checks and buy these uh, uh, cashier checks, which is what the funds will have to be. Also, they have not set out the time yet, but right after this is normally when we pay the second half of our connection on the budget. Uh, next week, the, the total that we will owe will be on your bulletin, so you'll know where we are. Uh, and then the annual conference is September 6th through the 8th. Uh, September 5th is the Northwest Texas WMF annual day. And if it has not changed, September 9th is the Northwest Texas YPP annual day. WMF? The 6th, it is on the 6th of May, not the 5th. Okay. And then the, the YPP remains the Saturday after? The Saturday after. Okay. And then we have this other announcement to provide. Uh, Superintendent Dexter Lewis of Agape Temple of Deliverance, 3003 Stevens Avenue in Dallas, Texas, will be conducting a revival uh, at 7.30 p.m. nightly on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at Open Door Church of God in Christ, 1201 East 8th Avenue, of course, and the host pastor is Charles Thomas. And those are all the announcements that I have. I do believe, uh, Reverend Uncle, we want to make sure that we Pray uh, for those who are on our sick and shut in list and pray for those who have lost family members. Uh, uh, we realize uh, Brother Larry's twin sister is on hospice and we want to pray for Linda Jones Beck and all of us whose names are listed on our and we want to pray for Sister Burma Ward. Uh, we don't know uh, how she is buried, but we know that. She needs all the prayers that we have. She is in the hospital, I do believe, uh, and we're going to make sure that we pray for her as a long time, long time, uh, Bethlehem in the name. And those are all the announcements that I have right now. Sister Bessie, yes. Sister Bessie, Sister Bessie, Bessie, Bessie. Bessie. We learned this this morning, I'm sorry. Uh, just before uh, we came out of Sunday school, or while we were in Sunday school, uh, Sister Bessie Bell was taken to the hospital this morning. Uh, Complaining of a, of a pain in her stomach size, uh, whatever it may be, we want to pray for Sister Bessie Bell, who's also a longtime lady member of Bethlehem Church, and we want to pray that God heals all of those in need of healing uh, in His time. Thanks. This, this is just kind of a today's reflection for me. Today would have been my mother's birthday. Uh, my grandma passed in 19, and my mom passed in uh, 91. So it was a very tough time. So as I said, I, I reflected on that. And I know I'm going to go down there. So I don't want to pray, although I know they're not there, but they're not forgotten. Uh, I said all that to say this. We, we, we talked about the number of Christians that we lost. We talk about uh, outside of the community and things like every weekend that the Christian uh, uh funerals uh, that are going on for people that we either have ties to or know of. Uh, and once again, I'll say that life is just so short for any kind of pettiness, any kind of whatever it is that's going on. Life is too short. Enjoy the simple things the grandkids, the relationships that you have with people, 
in a positive way. Because we don't, we, most of us have more years behind us than we do in front of us. So that was my little reflection. Today, there are two services in Dallas I wish I could attend, but I can't. Uh, there are two uh, nobles who have passed away, uh, one whom I've known for nearly 40 years, the other I've only known for a few years. Uh, they have the memorial service today at Hella Temple for uh, Chance Noble, Noble Noble who, uh, known as Ocho the Clown, one of his classmates told me he was a clown before he was a shrine. And uh, he was a good guy. But let's be in prayer for Sister Lisa Noble in the loss of Brother Chance. And also, uh, Noble Isaac Carey, whom I've known as, as Zakat Temple, number 164 in Dallas, uh, I joined Zakat in November of 20, uh, I'm sorry, November of 1983, so this coming November will mark 40 years since I've known uh, Brother Carey. And uh, Sister Marjorie Carey needs our prayers. Uh, these were two very fine men. Uh, long time, one, one was a long time friend, another was a relatively new friend. But may God be with the family in their morning. Sister Oswald's surgery is scheduled for August the 14th, so let's lift up her. I recently had an x-ray done of having trouble with my right leg, and I'm going to have to see an orthopedic surgeon. Hopefully, it won't be anything too severe, but lift me up, please, in prayer. Any other prayer requests? Let us stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for letting us be together. Thank for Bethel, the house of God, all that's met here since 1872. And I pray that Bethel will continue till time shall be no more, and may we be able to make positive contributions to have the church be what you'd have it to be. Guide and direct us all, Lord. Father, we ask that you will be with those that are suffering from losses for Brother Larry Jones' family, for Brother Chance Noble, Brother Isaac Carey, <coughs> and all others who suffer loss of loved ones. Help us to be bearers of one another's burdens. Lord, we ask that you will take control. We pray for those that need healing, those that are suffering now. We pray that you'll be with Sister Bessie Bell. Uh, she was taken to the hospital today. We thank that we're able to see her and pray with her before she left. And I pray that she'll get through whatever she needs. Okay. Guide and direct us all together and bless us one by one. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
Solos. Okay. Why are you here? Because I'm going to play the piano. I'm just kidding. It's just that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sometimes you got to throw it out there. Look at that. You at home? You at home?
Earlier in our service, uh, we dealt with uh, Acts 3, we read Acts 3, 1 through 26, the great restoration. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank Thee today, Lord. We thank for bringing us to this point in time. We thank You for the joys You've given us and for what we've been able to achieve up until this this time, Lord, in our lives. Lord, I know that many of us are up in years and we're facing challenges. People are facing challenges as far as employment, as far as health, as far as family, as far as finances, and as far as many other things. But we know, Lord, that you can make everything well, and you will. We pray you'll take control even now and give us that great restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Our text deals with the subject of restoration. I wish to focus in the New Jerusalem Bible on verse 16. It is the name of Jesus which, through faith in him, has brought back the strength of this man whom ye see here and who is well known to you. It is faith in him that has restored this man to health, as you see. Also, verses 19 through 21, Now you must repent and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, and so that the Lord may send you the Christ he has predestined, that is, Jesus, whom heaven must keep Till the universal restoration comes, which God proclaimed, speaking through his holy prophets. These verses connect the restoration of one individual with the universal restoration that God has promised. So it, it connects a lot of things right here. This should demonstrate to us that no person and no event is insignificant in the sight of God. And that whenever we experience restoration in our lives, our experience is just a foretaste of that great restoration that is to come. The term restoration refers to a recovery process. It suggests we have missed the ultimate design that our Creator has for our lives, and we need to get back on track. We have to acknowledge that we are not where God would have us end up. And all of us, if we're honest, will admit we're there. We don't, we, we're not where God wants us to be, not 100%. Hopefully we're closer than we were at one time in our lives. Hopefully we're making progress. Hopefully we've learned from some of our mistakes. Uh, un un unfortunately, some of us keep repeating them. I'm as bad as the worst than anybody on that. But nevertheless, we just admit we're not where God wants us to be, not 100%. And so, God knows we're in the process of restoration. Every one of us. 
We're in the process of being restored. He knows what we need to go through for restoration. God is also very patient with us as he brings through this process. We need to allow God to remove what we don't need in our lives to do his will. Yes. And to impart to us what will be essential to carry out his specific will for our lives. Yesterday afternoon I was up here at the church sweeping and vacuuming and I try to do that, trying to do that more often now. But I can think about uh, over the years the different churches I've pastored and as many times as I've done that and so many times when I've been doing that, I've been thinking about negative experiences I've had and blah, 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 and it really gets out of control. Yesterday I resolved not to do that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We've all had negative experiences. But for this purpose to take place, it's imperative that there be an atmosphere of acceptance. Thus, we need to know it is okay to be in process, not to have act completely together. You know, uh, there's a couple of songs I can think of that deal with that. Please be patient with me. God's not through with me yet. You know that song? And there's another more contemporary song. He's still working on me. To make me what he wants to me, it took him days to make the moon and the stars, all the planets, Jupiter and Mars, how loving and patient he must be. He's still working on me. I'm a work in progress. There are many verses in the Bible related to restoration. I'm confirm, firmly convinced that the restoration which occurs in individual lives is inseparably linked with the restoration of God's chosen people, Israel, and with the great restoration which is to come. Psalm 51, 12 through 3, King David wrote, Restoring to me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Until I have that joy restored, I'm not going to be effective. But when it's restored, I can teach transgressors the way. And I'll tell them what God will do. There are many passages in Scripture that speak of the restoration of Israel. The Bible teaches the restoration of the Jews will be a blessing to the Gentiles. A fact that many Gentiles even today fail to see. According to Isaiah 2, verses 1 through 6, the word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, it shall come to pass in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. All nations shall flow unto it. Many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge among the nations. He shall rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords in the plowshares, their spears in the pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Amen. The prophet Isaiah spoke of a day when God will restore thy judges as at the first, thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion shall be redeemed with judgment, her converts with righteousness. In subsequent chapters, the same prophet spoke of the great restoration in which the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. All nations shall flow unto it. 
when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem, shall be called holy even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem, from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, upon their assemblies a cloud and smoke by day, and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. There shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime for the heat, for a place of refuge and for a covert from storm and from rain. Likewise, the Israelites are assured that they will be able to look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eyes shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. Not one of the stakes thereof shall be removed, neither shall any of the cords thereof be broken. The beautiful words of Isaiah 61, 1 through 8 describe the great restoration. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison of them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. And you shall be named priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame you shall have double. For confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in the land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. The prophet Jeremiah also had much to say about the great restoration. Through Jeremiah, God promised that I will give you pastors according to my own heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. They shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. <clears throat> Likewise, God assured the Israelites, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me. I will hearken unto you. You shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. I will turn away your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. I will bring you again into a place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Jeremiah's message is that God does all things for a purpose. All things. Ancient Israel and the new Israel, which is the church, are assured that for thus saith the Lord, like I, as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so I bring upon them all the good that I promised them. And then Ezekiel, my favorite prophet, wrote, For in my holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, 
There shall all the house of Israel, all of the land, serve me. There will I accept them. There will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your oblations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet savor when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. In the famous story of the Valley of the Dry Bones, remember that? Yes. Ezekiel reported, then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you to the land of Israel. You shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves and brought you up out of your graves. I shall pour my spirit in you. You shall live. I shall place you in your own land. You shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. Restoration is also an important theme of the prophet Amos, who is much better known for his preaching of judgment. For in Amos 9, 11 through 15, In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen, and close up the branches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins. I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all of the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drip sweet wine, and hills shall melt. It will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them, they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land. They shall no more be pulled up out of the land which I have given them, saith the Lord God. The prophet Zechariah spoke of the restoration of Israel after God's people had been delivered from their enemies when he wrote, I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up. The pride of Assyria shall be brought down, the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. I will strengthen them in the name of the Lord. They shall walk up and down in his name. The Apostle Paul had much to say about God's covenant with Israel and how this covenant is inseparably linked with the offering of the salvation to the Gentiles. There can be no doubt that Paul believed that the restoration of the Jews would be a blessing to the Gentiles. In 2 Corinthians 3, 13 through 18, he wrote, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel should not steadfastly look to the end, that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face beholding as a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed in the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of God. We're talking in Sunday school this morning about transformation. And as I say, uh, most of the time when you hear the word transformation, it always means change. And it usually means a positive change. I mean, when you speak of a negative change, you usually use some other word besides transformation. 
nobody wants to be transformed into anything bad. We need to be transformed into something good. And as previously stated, the New Jerusalem Bible renders Acts 3.16 as follows. It is in the name of Jesus, through faith in Him, has brought back the strength of this man whom you see here, who is well known to you. It is faith in Him that has restored this man to health. And in Acts 3, 19 through 21, now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. And so the Lord may send you the Christ He is predestined. It's already planned ahead of time. And that Christ is none other than Jesus, whom heaven must keep till the universal restoration comes, which God proclaimed, speaking through His holy prophets. You can see how he spoke for all these men of God. These verses connect the restoration of one individual man who was healed with the great restoration, the universal restoration God has promised. None of this is unrelated to God's promises concerning the restoration of his people Israel. So you got three restorations here. One individual the nation of Israel and the entire human race. This should demonstrate that to us that no person, no event is insignificant in the sight of God. Whenever we experience restoration in our lives, our experience is just a foretaste of the great restoration that is to come. <laughs> Service the other day in Dallas. Speaker of pointed out that sometimes we have to call upon God, deliver me one more time. Set me free one more time. Has God ever delivered you before? Did you ever get back in the same mess you were in after you were delivered? So you have to keep on asking to deliver you. I firmly believe Christians have the responsibility to make this world a better place. I'm equally convinced that, however, whatever is not right, when Jesus comes, he'll make it right. Yeah. We don't know. We do the best you can. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Yeah, yeah do that. Do everything you can to make a better world. It won't be a perfect world, but it can be better. Yes. When Jesus comes, he makes all things new. Such inspire us to rejoice with the assurance that indeed our redemption draws us. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We ask you to come at this time to commit your life to Jesus Christ. Number 261, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Church, 101 North 4th Street, Fort Japan, Texas, 75 
Zilla. You may also get online by going to our website at www.bethelambccor.org under the Zilla side. Does anybody have any word before we go? Are we still doing it? Is it 20 minutes after? The 20 minutes? Sister Duane? Restoration Committee. Do my message tied in with what the church is trying to do now? Yes. Praise the Lord. God is sovereign. Yes, Brother Sims. No. He is moving around. Yeah. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. so that your sins may be wiped out. And so the Lord may send you the Christ he is predestined, that is Jesus, whom heaven must keep till the universal restoration comes, which God proclaims, speaking through his holy prophets. Father, we ask that you will dismiss us from this place, but never dismiss us from your presence. Put around us your arm of protection and shield us from hurt, harm, and danger. Now let us go forth in the restoration brought by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.